Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and it's time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost, and this is book one in the Night Huntress series. So this book has just been kind of sitting on my shelf for a little while, and after reading it, I want to kick myself for taking this long to get to it. It's probably been on my shelf I want to say around the time I moved into this apartment, so like two years-ish. What the heck? What was I doing? Why was I taking so long? Because I really enjoyed this book. So this book is a paranormal romance, urban fantasy sort of deal. So our main character Kat is half vampire and it is her self-given mission to hunt down other vampires in hopes to come across her deadbeat father who assaulted her mother, which is how she came along, and just she wants to take him out. She wants to take him out and any other vampire along the way. She thinks they are completely evil, none of them are good, so they all need to be exterminated. And one night, she is captured by a vampire she is hunting and forced into this, according to the back flap, unholy partnership. So Bones, vampire, obviously, and he is a bounty hunter who hunts down other vampires. And he makes a deal with her. I will show you how to be a better hunter, how to take down big old vampires like himself in exchange for her going after the ones that he points her to. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I love Kat. I absolutely adore Bones. I love the chemistry between them. I just, I love this book. And I want to say more. I really do, but I'm afraid that I might risk giving something spoilery. The only reason I've said as much as I have is because it's all right here on the back flap for all to see. So I'm going to go into a spoiler a bit to gush some more. So if you have not read this book yet, I highly suggest you click away now and come back after you read the book. So can I just start this off by saying that I am so glad that it didn't take Bones and Cat several books before they actually got together. They did the, did the dirty, they admitted their feelings, all that. Like I do enjoy slow burn romances occasionally. But there is a fine line to me when, okay, this is a nice slow burn and oh my god, just freaking kiss already. So yeah, I'm glad we didn't have to wait several books for one of them to make a damn move. Like I know, you know, the events at the end have kind of separated them, but I feel that is like a good separation. Like, it's an understandable one, it's a reasonable one, it's not just some stupid fight or misunderstanding. Kat is genuinely trying to keep Bone safe. And not just Bones, but her and her mother as well. That kind of separation, ending the relationship sort of thing, I can get on board with. It's not some pointless, stupid drama. So yeah, I will also admit that Kat's mom annoys me. Like, I do not blame her at all for her opinions on vampires. Like, considering the one vampire she has knowingly met, raped her, and impregnated her, can't blame her too much for her dislike. And I will even admit, to a point, I can even understand her... I can't say hatred, but her kind of mixed feelings on towards Kat. Like, she... Kat is the living everyday reminder of that assault she went through. So I totally, totally understand her hatred towards vampires as well as even her mixed feelings about her daughter. I can understand being bitter towards your daughter in that kind of situation. But thinking that she has evil in her and this evil could show up at any time, that's, that's a little much. Like, she needs to reevaluate things. And the fact that she is so gung-ho about her daughter out there destroying vampires can, I can also understand that to a point, wanting to take it down these horrible things that hurt you. But wanting her young daughter 
I can't remember off the top of my head how old Kat was when she took down her first vamp. She was like a teenager. But it's like, you're letting your teenage daughter go out there where she could get killed to take down these supposedly evil things. It's, I don't know if I'm doing a good job describing this, so I'm just gonna move on. But I will say, I hope her mom comes around a little bit in the future, if only for Kat's sake. Honestly, with that kind of toxic mindset, I wouldn't blame Kat at all if she wanted to cut herself off from her mother. But at the same time, it's like, that is her only family, so I understand the unwillingness to do that. But just having a parent who can't stand a part of who and what you are is painful to watch or read in this case. So for Kat's sake, I hope she comes around some points in the future. I mean, Kat has come around and has changed her opinion on vampires a whole lot in the span of this one book. So hopefully maybe her mom will come around. I am so curious to see how Bones reacts in the next book when he finds out that Kat is gone and like what kind of deal she made and all that. I actually fear for Kat too with the kind of situation she got herself in with the FBI. Like no matter what kind of precautions she has taken to not chain herself to them for however long her natural life will be, you know, things are gonna go down. Things are probably gonna go horribly wrong. Just in every situation, even remotely similar to this, I've read in the past where governments gets involved, things don't end well. I can see them not wanting to let Kat go, or them, like, going to drastic means to like exterminate vampires and other undead things and, or even worse now that they know that vampire blood heals thanks to cats what they could try and do like science wise or experimentation wise just I have a gut feeling that things are not going to end well I can only imagine what kind of corruption there is in the ranks of the governments like I said before, I'm so curious to see how Bones handles everything and if he's going to try and rescue Kat or not, if he's going to get caught or hurt by the government. Just, there is so much to consider. Especially since I believe the whole situation with Hennessy and his lackeys was all wrapped up. You know, Kat managed to take down the governor who was in on this. Hennessy is gone. Pretty much all the major players are gone. So see whether that's like all done with or if there's someone else who might try and pick things up or if there was someone else they didn't know about. I'm pretty sure things might be wrapped up. So if so, that's awesome having that all wrapped up in one book instead of carrying on through all of them. I also wonder what else is real in this world. We learned that ghosts are a thing, vampires, ghouls, I'm curious as to what else might be real in this world, like what other paranormal supernatural things we might see along the way. I am super excited to find out and oh my god I feel like I had so much more I wanted to say about this book but for the life of me I can't remember what I keep drawing up a blank so I'm just gonna stop here. Once again I thought this was a great beginning to a series. I am so excited to pick up the next one. I actually have it downstairs. I plan to quickly finish up what book I'm reading now just so I can continue on. So yeah, that is it for this book review. For anyone still watching, what do you think of this book? What were some characters you loved? What were some characters you hated? What are some aspects about this whole take on vampires that you liked? Just let me know. Let's get a discussion going. So yeah, that is it for this book review and I hope to see you guys next time.